Saddam Hussein, the Iraqi dictator whose vicious regime caused suffering and death throughout the country, was born on April 28, 1937, in a small village near Tikrit, Iraq. He grew up in a modest household and faced challenges from an early age. In a region characterized by poverty and tribal dynamics, Hussein faced the harsh realities of rural life from a young age. His family, part of the Sunni Arab Tikriti clan, lived in a mud-brick house and depended on farming for their sustenance. Despite the modest circumstances, Hussein's early experiences would sow the seeds of his determination and resourcefulness. The young Saddam was raised by his mother and extended family after his father died shortly before his birth. The absence of a father figure during his formative years may have contributed to Hussein's strong desire to establish his authority and dominance later in life. Education was a luxury in Tikrit, and young Hussein received a basic education at a local mosque, where he learned to read and write in Arabic. However, his thirst for knowledge extended beyond the confines of his village, and he sought to broaden his horizons. At the age of 10, Hussein moved to live with his maternal uncle, Kairala Talfa, who was a schoolteacher and a fervent nationalist. Talfa's influence played a crucial role in shaping Hussein's early political and ideological outlook. Under Talfa's guidance, Hussein delved into Arab nationalist literature, which extolled the virtues of a united Arab world and independence from colonial powers. This exposure ignited Hussein's interest in politics and activism, leading him to join the Arab Socialist Ba'ath Party at a young age. The party's socialist and anti-imperialist ideals resonated with Hussein, offering him a sense of purpose and a platform through which he could channel his ambitions. In the 1950s, he became an active member of the party, driven by a vision of a united and strong Arab world. His participation in anti-government activities, and a failed coup attempt in 1959 showcased his determination to shape Iraq's destiny. Despite facing setbacks, Hussein's commitment to the Ba'ath Party propelled him into leadership positions. By the late 1960s, he had become a prominent figure within the party's ranks, known for his strategic thinking and organizational skills. In 1968, Hussein played a pivotal role in orchestrating a successful coup that toppled the existing government and brought the Ba'ath Party to power. Hussein's ascent continued as he navigated the complexities of Iraqi politics. In 1979, he orchestrated a final push to the top, using a combination of political maneuvering and a violent purge of the Ba'ath Party. He eventually seized the presidency of Iraq, cementing his status as the country's undisputed leader. Internationally, Hussein's regime became isolated due to his aggressive foreign policy initiatives. One of the most significant events during his rule was the Iran-Iraq War, which lasted from 1980 to 1988. Hussein's invasion of Iran aimed to capitalize on the chaos following the Iranian Revolution, but the conflict quickly escalated into a brutal and protracted war that cost hundreds of thousands of lives. Despite international condemnation, Hussein's regime received support from various countries, including the United States, which saw Iraq as a counterbalance to Iran's regional influence. One of the most infamous episodes of Saddam Hussein's rule was the Anfal Campaign, a brutal military operation aimed at crushing Kurdish resistance in northern Iraq. The campaign involved mass killings, chemical attacks, and forced displacement of Kurdish civilians. The most notorious incident was the gassing of the town of Halabja in March 1988, which killed thousands of civilians. During the late 80s, tension had been building between Iraq and Kuwait due to territorial disputes and economic issues. Iraq accused Kuwait of exceeding its oil production quotas, leading to a drop in oil prices that severely affected Iraq's economy, already strained by the Iran-Iraq war. On August 2, 1990, Saddam Hussein's forces invaded Kuwait, but shortly afterwards, a 42-country military coalition launched Operation Desert Storm. This massive air campaign aimed to degrade and weaken Saddam's military capabilities and infrastructure. Coalition forces employed advanced technology and air power to target key military installations, communication centers, and government buildings in Iraq. The air campaign continued for 42 days, significantly weakening Iraq's ability to resist. Following its success, the coalition launched a ground offensive on February 24, 1991. The ground forces, which included US, British, French, Saudi Arabian, and other coalition troops, rapidly advanced into Kuwait and then into southern Iraq. The Iraqi military, hampered by the air campaign and internal dissent, offered limited resistance. 
the coalition forces achieved swift victories, and on February 28, 1991, a ceasefire was declared. Despite being defeated, Saddam would still go on to publicly declare victory. After the first Gulf War ended, the many ethnic and religious divisions within the country simmered over, and uprisings occurred. Both the Shiite Muslims and Kurdish population would revolt but would be brutally repressed by Saddam's regime. The death toll by the end was in the hundreds of thousands. Saddam Hussein's actions on the international stage and his brutal repression of his own people drew widespread condemnation. In 2003, the United States, under the administration of President George W. Bush, launched a military intervention known as the Iraq War. The primary pretext for the war was the belief that Iraq possessed weapons of mass destruction, and that a relationship existed between the terrorist group Al-Qaeda and Saddam's regime. In March of 2003, a US-led coalition launched a full-scale invasion of Iraq with the primary purpose of toppling Saddam's regime. The coalition forces quickly overran Iraqi defenses and occupied major cities, including Baghdad. The war eventually led to the fall of Saddam Hussein's regime, and he was captured by US forces in December 2003. The US military received intelligence about Hussein's potential whereabouts from various sources, including detainees and informants. Acting on this information, U.S. troops conducted a nighttime raid on the targeted location. As they entered the hiding place, Hussein was discovered hiding in a small concealed underground bunker, affectionately known as a spider hole. He was disheveled, reportedly sporting a long beard and unkempt appearance. After a trial, he was found guilty of crimes against humanity and sentenced to death. Saddam was executed by hanging on December 30, 2006. After the fall of Saddam and his regime, mass graves were discovered throughout Iraq, containing the remains of thousands of individuals who had been executed or killed during various campaigns of repression. Following the death of Saddam Hussein, Iraq faced numerous challenges, including a power vacuum, sectarian tensions, and a growing insurgency. The absence of effective governance led to looting, civil disorder, and the emergence of armed militias. The recent terrorist group known as ISIS was born from the downfall of his regime and still poses a threat to peace in the region to this day. Although Iraq has transitioned to a democracy in recent years, there are still many challenges ahead. Saddam Hussein's legacy is that of a ruthless leader whose ideas and vision for Iraq and other Arab nations caused the deaths of between 500,000 and 1 million people. The removal of his regime marked a pivotal moment in regional dynamics, but the aftermath also revealed the complexities of post-conflict reconstruction and the difficulties of transitioning to a stable and democratic society. Thanks for joining us. Remember to subscribe for more fascinating biographies.